Who had one of these? Not me. They always creep me out. Oh, God. Hey, me, Furby! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, no, you, you. <laughs> First, we gotta get the skin off. Let's see where it's actually attached. I think going in through the bottom. Ah, oh, jeez. Really? Little trilobe screws. So, what I'm gonna have to do is go dremel these into a slot. I'll be right back. Okay, so now you know, if, as long as you don't care about destroying the, the product, you can always just dremel a slot right across any kind of crazy screw that they put in there, and then it's a flathead screw. Ugh, those are a little tiny feet of nightmares. I was hoping when I got the feet off, the fur would, ah, <laughs> yeah, little slippers. Okay. Hopefully more doesn't come apart here than I want to. This is a really long screw. I don't actually care if I get this thing back together, but I do want to figure out how they did it. So I'm trying to not be too destructive. Good. All right, I'm just gonna start cutting soon. So the skin is sewed to this like kind of transparent little piece of plastic in here. Ah, it snaps. Those snaps too. interesting so here you can see there's this thin plastic thing that kind of goes around the hole in the skin and it has little snaps built into it and so they just sewed it to the fabric I think they sew this thing in place there's this big jagged stitch right up the back big thread. They probably get it mostly in place and then have one machine that kind of goes up the back and sews it together. How creepy is this? Oh wow. <laughs> wow that's creepy. Trying to do as much as I can, just cut threads. I'm not really cutting the skin. <laughs> you about ready for your nightmares? <laughs> That's creepy as hell. Wow. Speaker. <laughs> Silicone mouth. Eyeballs. Oh man. I'm gonna put his feet back on, put the batteries back in. <laughs> this is gonna be great. <laughs> All right, let's see this. <laughs> so creepy. I'm trying to figure out what these, how do these sense, is it like inductive? They get closer together. All right, let's see. Oh yeah. Just this little, yeah, it's not even a micro switch. It's just a piece of sheet metal that bends down and makes contact. Get the front off. Let's see. Huh. 
So I guess this is the microphone. I'm just gonna uncoil these side wires. So the black wire goes from the PCB, all this extra wire, down to the red wire goes to this guy and the black wire goes to this guy. I don't know what the heck that is. The wire just ends up in this little kind of cup and it looks like it's just glued in there. So it's pushed through then they tie a knot in it and put some goop on it. I don't care if the speaker or the mic works anymore. There we go. Wow, just keeps getting better and better, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's put the batteries back in, see if it still works. here and pulley. You can see the gearbox inside there too. So there must be parts engage and disengage depending on what it wants to do because it seems like the same gear train moves the legs and the mouth as we dig in further. <laughs> it's creepy. It'll be interesting to see what goes to what. You can see there's a little lever right there that pushes out and makes the belly stick out. So the legs are pretty straightforward. As this gear spins, this eccentric pin here moves in the slot, pulls the foot up and down in this channel. That's pretty straightforward. Kind of scared of what's going to be under here. Less flesh colored plastic we have on here, I think the better. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, me, Furby! It's interesting. The opening and closing beaks make sense. And then these little side guys make the mouth kind of fold and, and move and smile and frown in certain orientations. I can't imagine how many different mechanisms and how many different ideas they tested before they came up with this one. Still super creepy, but very cool. Hey, me, Furby! Now you can see inside the mouth where that like tongue thing was glued. And then there's little slots in the sides where these guys go. All right, I think it's time to go for the eyeballs. Ah, okay, yeah, you can see. So right in here, the white plastic parts here go back into the drivetrain and they move the top and the bottom eyelid and it's just snapped into a little hook inside the eyelid and then the other side looks like it just follows along. It's just an idler. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> <Hot doodle -doo. laughs> so you can see when these plastic parts here move in and out, that would have been opening and closing the eyelids. Just two contacts getting pushed together. Nothing fancy there. So the lever that was pushing, that would make the belly come on in and out was this guy. So I just push it down and it unhooked. Makes it easy for assembly. You can do all your soldering and assembly from this side and then clip. Up. 
Lots of good wire retention on this guy. You can see the wire goes through the little tab there. Just keeps things from getting in the wrong place, especially on something like this where everything moves around. All right, after poking around in here a bit, it looks like basically the top mechanisms, all the black plastic parts are kind of isolated from the bottom. Check that out. So electric motors here, pulley, goes to a worm gear, that goes to this gear in the middle. All right, so this is the linkage to move the ears. Oh yeah, there you go. You can see uh, it's a little rack and pinion. There's a little channel in the side of this disc. There must be a little pin on this guy that goes into there. So I'm gonna pull this out and see how much falls apart. So that was one of the ear mechanisms. Yep, you can see there's a pin that traveled around in that slot in the side of the wheel. Yeah, so here is the pin that rode in this slot on the shaft. So this pin, when it would go in that slot, would get moved side to side. When you move that pin side to side, eyes move. You know, it's all black plastic, it's hard to see. But you can see kind of the, the rack that connects the eyes. Okay, let's get into the bottom half. First, oh. First I'm going to get rid of all the, all the wires. Ah, oh, interesting. So right in here, as the leg moves, there's a little cam right here, and it makes this a little electrical connection. See that? Connection. I don't know, it must just make a certain noise, or it knows that it's gone around exactly once. All right, so there's some, some cool stuff going on in the base here. There's only one electric motor and two functions, the feet and the mouth. So how do they make that work? All right, so the motor turns, the pulley that's in here turns this gear. This part is nice and long. It's because this gear shuttles back and forth depending on which way it's turning. See, the gear has little teeth on either side of it that grabs the teeth on either this gear over here or this gear over here. It's turning this way, and it turns this part of the gear train, and that goes to the mouth. If it goes the other way, you'll see these teeth mesh now it's turning this part of the gear train, which moves the legs. So just by changing the direction of the motor, they can command two different functions. So they can either make it talk or make it walk. So there you go. That's what's inside of Furby. I had no idea. I knew it would be kind of clockworky, and I'm pretty happy with how much stuff there was going on inside there. So why do something like this? I think that examining products and things that already exist is a great way to learn about how, how you can get something done. You never know when some client you work with is going to need something to jog back and forth and only have a rotary motion to do so. I think you need to build up your mental toolbox so that you have more ideas to draw on when you're trying to solve a new problem. And thanks for watching.